Hello everyone. It's great to see you again and I hope you are all doing well. Today I want to share with you some hosting tips and recipes for a springtime dinner party. I'm serving classic vichyssoise for the first course, roast duck on a bed of mirepoix for the main course, a simple spinach salad for the third course palate cleanser, and a shimmering strawberry galette for the grand finale. This is a stress-free dinner for the cook. All of the dishes can be made well ahead of time, which means you can relax and enjoy a cocktail when your guests arrive. We are going to start with the strawberry galette dessert. And I'm going to make the galette crust right in my little food processor. So I have 210 grams of all-purpose flour. That's about one and a half cups of flour, but you really should weigh the flour. One tablespoon of granulated sugar and a pinch of salt, about a quarter teaspoon. Pulse the machine once or twice just to blend these ingredients. Now I'm going to add a half cup or 113 grams of cold diced butter. Just scatter that right over the flour and then pulse the machine about five times just to break up the butter. Then crack one large egg into a glass measure. whisk, and then add just enough heavy cream to equal one half cup. Now this recipe is on my website, so you really don't have to write everything down. Just go to the website. I have a printable recipe there. Now I'm going to pour about one third of this mixture over the flour. And then I'm going to run the machine just until a clumpy dough forms. That's it. Here's what a clumpy dough looks like. I'm going to use my handy pastry cloth for this next step. Transfer the clumpy dough to the cloth or to a sheet of cling film. And then gather the dough into a ball. Flatten the ball into a disc. And then wrap the disc in cling film. Pop this into the refrigerator oh, for 30 minutes or one hour so that the dough can become fully hydrated. Refrigerate the leftover egg and cream mixture. We will use it to glaze the crust just before baking. While the dough is chilling, I'm going to make the strawberry filling. Take a half cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar, put this in a medium to large bowl, and then add three generous tablespoons of cornstarch. Cornstarch is going to thicken the strawberry juices and whisk to combine the sugar and cornstarch. Then take one pound of strawberries, either fresh or frozen. Mine are partially frozen. And we're going to cut these into lengthwise slices. Cut the medium sized strawberries just lengthwise in half like so. You can cut the very large strawberries into thirds. Add the sliced strawberries directly to the sugar and cornstarch mixture. Toss the strawberries in the sugar and cornstarch and then let them sit and macerate or exude their juices for about 15 minutes. Now preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. 
Now we're going to roll out the dough. So I've lightly floured my work surface here, which is my good old pastry cloth. Add a little more flour on top of the dough. We are going to pound the dough with a rolling pin just to make the dough malleable and to show it who's boss. There, I like to shore up the sides of the dough. Roll the dough into a 12 inch diameter circle. When you roll dough, always start at the middle and then roll to within maybe a half inch from the edge of the dough. Don't go all the way over the dough. I like using this pastry cloth because nothing sticks to it. Also, it's washable. I forgot to tell you that you can make this strawberry galette on the morning of your dinner party. It's great to know that your dessert is already made and ready to go. 12 inches. Fold the dough into quarters. Take a baking sheet that is lined with parchment and unfold the dough. Then scatter some cornstarch over the dough. Now we're using this cornstarch on the dough and in the strawberry mixture just to avoid having a a soupy or watery galette. I want those juices really thick. Add the strawberries, leaving about a one inch border. All those beautiful juices onto the galette. Spread them out, again, within one to one and a half inches from the edge of the dough. And then fold the dough border over the outermost berries, making pleats as you go. Don't try to be perfect here. This is a rustic galette. It should look homemade. Now let me fetch my remaining cream and egg mixture. Brush the egg and cream over the exposed border. The egg and cream is going to encourage the crust to brown beautifully in the oven. Now, if this dough has softened up on you, just pop this into the refrigerator over 15 minutes or so, and then bake it off. I'm going to bake the galette until the crust browns and the juices bubble. That's going to take 40 to 45 minutes. Our galette is done. And it appears that I had a little accident with the strawberry juices, but that's okay. The crust is gorgeous and the galette smells just heavenly. To give the strawberries a shimmering glaze, I've heated two tablespoons of strawberry jam in this little custard cup. I just put the cup in the microwave for about 45 seconds. And then I'm going to brush the berries with the hot jam. This will give the berries almost a mirror finish. Now I'm going to let this tart cool down and then I will transfer it to this wooden cutting board just for easy slicing. On to the vichyssoise, which is nothing more than leek and potato soup served cold. Peel and roughly dice two medium sized gold potatoes. Put the potato pieces into cold water to stop them from oxidizing. 
Now take four to five large leeks and you want to roughly dice them. I'm only using the white and tender green portion of the leeks. Of course, I did wash these leeks very, very well. Bench scrapers are so convenient. Now in a soup pot or a Dutch oven set over medium heat, add a half cup or 113 grams of butter. Melt the butter, but do not let it color at all. Add the leeks, plus one tablespoon of kosher salt, and some grinds of black pepper. Give everything a toss. And then lower the heat to its lowest setting. Cover the pot and let the leeks sweat until they turn tender. That's going to take five to 10 minutes. All right, it's been about seven minutes. The leeks are perfectly tender. So now, add the potatoes and six cups of water. This is the traditional French recipe, which does not call for chicken stock, just uses plain water. Then crank up the heat, bring the water to a boil, and then lower the heat and let the potatoes simmer just until they are tender. That's going to take 10 to 20 minutes. The potatoes from the soup are now perfectly tender. So I'm going to let the soup cool for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we will puree it in the blender. I'm going to put this soup in the refrigerator to let it chill. You can make this soup two or three days ahead of time. And again, you can even freeze the soup and how great it is to know that you have your first course all ready to go. We are making a quick trip to the berry farm in Chatham, New York. I need to fetch some fresh thyme for the duck and some flowers for the table. Look ahead, the sea is calm and I know we've been through a lot, but just wait. Tulips, thyme, baby spinach. Impulse purchase. This is a rose geranium. It has an incredible perfume. I'm going to plant it in a pot in the herb garden. On to the main attraction, duck breast mirepoix. This is one of my go-to main courses because you can make it even a day ahead of time and just put it in the refrigerator until it's time to bake. Now the duck breasts bake on a bed of what is called mirepoix. It's a combination of diced carrots, diced onion, and diced celery. There are no exact measurements for this recipe. So use as many carrots, onions, and celery as you think your guests will eat. Put the carrots, the onion, and the celery into a cast iron pan. This is a 12 inch pan. You don't have to use cast iron. You just need to use an oven proof skillet. Give everything a mix. Season the mirepoix with salt and pepper. And let me fetch the duck. I bought these duck breasts from the supermarket. They were in the freezer section and I simply thawed them overnight. 
You put the duck breast directly on top of the mirepoix. Uh, I do have a lot of vegetables in here. You maybe don't want to use as much as I did today. Generously season the duck with salt. I'm using kosher salt here. Grinds of black pepper. Poultry seasoning. This is the poultry seasoning that you and I purchased at the general store about a month ago. And again, be generous here. As the duck cooks, its fat will flavor all of the vegetables below. Now for looks and some added flavor and perfume, I'm going to throw several sprigs of the thyme we purchased earlier at the berry farm right on top of the duck. Then I'm going to cover the skillet and pop this into the refrigerator. When you are ready to cook, preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius and let this cook uncovered for exactly one hour and 20 minutes. My third course was very easy to make. It's just the baby spinach leaves that we purchased earlier at the berry farm. I will dress the leaves shortly before serving time. Meanwhile, I will stick this in the refrigerator. And now that all of the food is made, there's plenty of time to head outside to set the table. We are dining in the herb garden this evening. The china I'm using is Minton Ardmore from the 1930s. I'm serving a 2018 Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir tends to go very well with duck. I've decided to plate the soup in the kitchen before bringing it to table. I'm garnishing the soup with a dash of cream that I swirl in with a skewer. First course is served. La soup. This is very rich, but very refreshing on a hot spring day like today. And again, this is just leek and potato soup served cold, and it's called vichyssoise. The duck is done. You can hold the duck in a warm oven until you are ready to serve it. I dressed the spinach leaves with Asian sesame dressing, plus a sprinkling of sliced almonds. the duck. What I love about duck breast is that it's always succulent. It's actually difficult to overcook duck. And of course the vegetables are tender and loaded with the flavor of the duck. Just delicious. I already tasted of the baby spinach salad, which was really just a palate cleanser. And now I'm ready for the dessert, our wonderful strawberry galette. You could serve this with whipped cream or ice cream if you like. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You don't need me to tell you how wonderful this galette is. It's sweet, but not too sweet. 
and that butter pastry crust is, well, out of this world. I hope you will give this make-ahead springtime dinner a try someday. As you've just seen, all of the dishes are very easy to do, and trust me, all of them are really delicious. If you enjoyed the recipes, please give this video a big thumbs up, and please subscribe if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Chin chin.